So but typically it's up to the stage designer to, if I don't want anybody going around the barrels to that, it's up to them to find a way to keep that from happening when they build the stage. Otherwise, you as the, as the, the puzzle solver, it's up to you to, to exploit any weakness in that stage design or any weakness in, you know, maybe, oh, I didn't see that. And somebody else saw that. I'm going to do that too, right? So it's up to you to exploit the weaknesses of the stage for your benefit. That's, that's the freedom of this. You, you, you're presented a puzzle. And it's up to you to solve it best way possible. You're probably not focused on a, an adequate sight picture or adequate enough sight picture. So it's like, oh, the sight picture for the first target worked pretty well. So now I can get a little loose on that middle target. Well, that worked pretty well because I'm not watching holes appear. So then you end up just looking at the last target and just watch holes pop up on it. And then you're generally surprised with like, wait a minute, that hole shouldn't have been there. That hole should have been somewhere else, right? And it's because we've let go of process to try to, to search for a result. We're trying to make a result happen. Anytime we try to make something happen or force it to happen or try harder to, to do something instead of just, nope, process is, I'm gonna see the sights, I'm gonna see a sight picture as needed for every single shot. I did notice that like your shot splits, you're definitely not afraid of the trigger on that thing. Like there's probably some sight, shot splits on there if we'd have get, been able to go back and look on the timer that probably had to be 15s, 15s or 16s. Like da 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 But the transitions weren't adequate to match the level of speed that you're trying to give on the, on the, the trigger on the gun. Trying to press the trigger that fast also means I have to let go of my vision to let that happen. So you're not letting the sights recover to, a, to an adequate point to be able to call a good second shot. So it's just like I'm going to rely on hopefully choking the hell out of this thing and just yanking the trigger to make things happen instead of I'm going to watch the sights at least lift and re return to a somewhat acceptable amount before I send the next shot instead of like I see a sight picture or a flash of something and I'm going to yank the trigger twice. So we're going to work on some, some techniques to get past that so you can get back to calling shots on every single target. When somebody says hit factor, I see a couple of guys like their eyes glaze over. They're like, I have no idea even what hit factor means. Technically, what hit factor is, is nothing more than points per second, right? So you're, what, how you calculate hit factor or how, how you determine hit factor like on your score is the number of points that you shot divided by the number of seconds that it took you to shoot the time or to, to shoot the stage in, right? So it's points divided by time gives you how many points you shot per second, and that's your hit factor. So obviously, the higher the hit factor, the better you did on the stage, right? Everybody always wants to try to strive for the highest hit factor. So in USPSA or, or IPSC, any, any kind of practical shooting, it's, it's, a, it's a blend of speed and accuracy. It used to be even more so speed, power, and accuracy. And we're, we're kind of at a day and age where really power, the guys are shooting minor, the guys that are like at the absolute tippy top of the game in minor don't care that they're shooting minor power factor. What minor power factor means is shooting nine millimeter, Everybody gets the same amount of points for an A zone hit, right? So each hole in the A zone is worth five points. So a maximum scoring of 10 points is what the target's worth. If you're shooting this outside circle here, or this outside edge, you know, the, the C zone, right? In major, so in like say Leighton or AJ's case where they're shooting a, 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 a higher power gun, right? So to speak, a 45, a 40 caliber, a 38 a super. <laughs> The, the, old, the old kind of calculated risk on this was they should technically, they should get a, a, a larger allowable surface to, to shoot the gun or to shoot the target at because they, they need to then be able to pick up the speed to carry the speed a little further, right? So they, C's are a little more acceptable. So they're worth four points. They're only worth one point down from the five points they would have shot from getting an A. Everybody's shooting nine millimeter, like what they call a minor power factor gun. You're, you're kind of at a disadvantage when it comes to shooting sloppier because technically you have a gun that's easier to control, right? A nine millimeter gun, technically speaking, is much easier to shoot, much easier to control than a 45 1911 that's, you know, ready to, to blast somebody off the mountaintop from back here, right? That, which isn't always the case. It's not really the case anymore. Then you get into open guns like Leighton's where he's running a 38 Super, probably running, what, 174, 175 power factor loads, right? So if you were to put a 38 Super, like, and yours, 230 grain, mm -hmm. so you're 173, 174 power factor? Yeah. If I were to literally take their guns and put 
put them in your hands and let you shoot your gun, 9 millimeter, and then shoot his gun, 45, you'd be like, damn, that's a difference. And then you shoot Leighton's gun and you go, damn, it made all this noise, but the gun didn't move at all. But he still, because the gun is optimized for major power factor, right? So he gets, he gets the better scoring, but he gets a gun that's probably the easiest gun in, in the class to shoot, as far as like to control and handle. It may not necessarily be the easiest gun to, to grip and actually shoot, though. So there's, there's trade-offs to that kind of thing. So anyway, 9 millimeter, right? They're, accept, they're expecting you should be more accurate because you have an easier to control firearm. And if you don't, you are punished by only getting three points for a Charlie instead of four. Whereas if I shoot a Delta with a 45, I still get two points on the target. But a 9 millimeter gun only gets one point. So you gave up four points. Basically, like I said, it's a lucky miss. You know, so those are the things to think about. Then when you're when you're trying to calculate points, and then you're trying to calculate, well, it should take me roughly 20, 22, 23 seconds to shoot that stage. The guys that are good at this math game can think about the total number of points versus the average amount of time it's going to take him to shoot the t shoot the stage, getting maximum number of points. So in this case, 165 points, right? So then they'll think, well, if I calculate my risk and I shoot a little faster here and I give up two or three Charlies and I shoot a little faster here and I give up one or two Charlies, I would allow myself to accept five points down or ten points down. But if it saves me two more seconds, then it's a wash, right? Because based on, based on George's math, right? It, right. It's, it's worth, two, you know, two points down is worth two tenths or four tenths. So exponentially, the faster I can shoot, the, the more allowable accuracy I can give up. But there's a certain, comes a point in time on the stage like this, most of the targets are seven to eight yards away. The farthest target's uh, about 12, and about 12 to 13 yards, right? Nobody's really going to gain a whole lot more time over somebody else shooting sloppier and accepting more overall points loss to save Time. Everybody still has to go from position to position to position.